Define activities. This is a process of identifying and documenting the specific actions to be performed to produce the project's deliverables. Now, just a quick reminder, when we were working on the work breakdown structure, we would decompose the deliverable down to the work package level. The work package is the lowest level of a component of the deliverable while still being a component of the deliverable. The example that we had used previously is of mashed potatoes being a part of the dinner. By itself, we can eat mashed potatoes. But if we try to decompose it further, we're either going to start discussing the resources that we need to make mashed potatoes, or we're going to start discussing the activities to create the mashed potatoes. Here, we're going to take those work packages and we're actually going to decompose them further to get the discrete activities. So if we were looking at mashed potatoes, now we're looking at peeling the potatoes, boiling the potatoes, mashing the potatoes, adding butter, stirring, and so on. So for tools and techniques, again, we do see decomposition. And then for our outputs, the activities list and activity attributes. Rolling wave planning is something that most of us do unconsciously for our entire lives. Basically, we're concentrating on near-term activities while you know, paying attention to the longer-term activities, but at a much higher level. So if we think about going on a vacation, if you've been on a vacation recently or you have one coming up, then you can probably go ahead and think about how the first day you're more so concerned about where are you going to eat dinner that first night than maybe where are you going to have brunch on the third day. Or what will you do on the afternoon before you go back to the airport? The near-term activities will take priority, but the longer-term activities are still being tracked. This is a form of progressive elaboration, which calls for planning at a very high level. And then as more information becomes available, we go back and we refine that plan as necessary. Outputs from this process include the activity list. Now, this is going to be a detailed list of all of the activities that we must do to complete this project. All we're trying to do is figure out all of the activities. Later on, we'll actually go ahead and put them into the right sequence and figure out how long they'll take and then actually build a schedule. We just need a list right now. Now, within this list, it should be sufficiently detailed where a team member can understand what work is required. So plain language becomes necessary. So if we're talking about renovating a kitchen, it could be strip the wallpaper, apply primer, sand walls maybe, apply paint, remove countertop, you know, sand cabinetry, paint cabinets. Right there, we're, we're giving discrete activities. These are things that must be done to create value. And at the same time, it's being written in such a way that people know what is expected of them. Activity attributes is a companion document for the activities list. In much the same way that the WBS has the WBS dictionary, this allows us to have more information aside from just a very long list of all of the work that must be done within the project. So the type of details that we may be capturing for each activity could include where is it tied to on the WBS, what is the name of the activity, short narrative description, any predecessor and successor activities, and this will be determined as part of the sequence activities process, any leads or lags, the person, department, organization who is responsible for actually completing the work. What types of constraints or assumptions could affect these activities in some capacity? What's the location of where this activity will be performed and what level of effort will it take? A milestone list is a great way to keep stakeholders informed as to progress within the project without trying to get them too deep into the details. If I tell you that we are 42% done, activity 2.4.9, that doesn't mean a, a whole lot to you unless you are really tracking everything that's going on here. If I give you a list of milestones on perhaps a glide path, you're able to at a glance kind of visualize exactly where we're at versus where we should be. The important concept of milestones, these are not activities. There's no work being done, so they do not have a duration. I like to use the example of New Year's Day or your birthday between December 31st and January 1st. Is it a new year or is it a new day? Well, of course, it's a new calendar year, but a year had not elapsed since the previous night. It was just a single day had passed. 
Uh, milestones pretty much the same way. It's just that we are denoting that something has happened or we've hit a certain point or something has occurred. So perhaps we had some type of inspection done, perhaps we did a ribbon cutting ceremony, perhaps we were breaking earth, whatever it might be. With the change requests, anytime we do a change request that is not part of the initial baseline, it will go through the perform integrated change control process. And finally, we have our project management plan updates. So anytime we need to update the schedule or cost baselines, that will be part of the PMP overall, since the baselines are part of your project management plan. So the further decomposition, we are going to take our WBS and we are going to look for our work packages. In this case, we have our project X that is our deliverable at the top. We have three categories here. We have hardware, software, and prototype. Within software, we have reports and specifications. So with a report, can we decompose that further? Well, we're going to go ahead and say probably not, because within that we have some information that we have to have, but we don't want to break it up into individual paragraphs or lines. So we are at the lowest level. We are at the work package. And this will be the basis, a starting point for our activities list. So we go ahead and we take our report. This is a thing. This is a noun. Anytime we are dealing with a noun, we, we can be pretty sure that that is a component of the deliverable. So we can go ahead and break it down into the discrete activities that must be completed in order to prepare this report. Very important note right here. We see verbs starting to appear, and this is something that I discussed previously as well. With the nouns, we're dealing with components of a deliverable. When we're seeing the verbs, now we are doing things. So we're doing things to create things. So we are gathering data. We are generating a first draft. We are sending out for review. The verbs tend to be the giveaway that we're dealing with discrete activities. Now, for exam purposes, and I know this is something that may be different than what you do in your organization, how you manage projects, but for the exam, you do not put any activities onto the WBS. Activities will always go onto the activities list. The WBS will remain strictly deliverable oriented. The activities will be fully documented, but never on the WBS. So we just finished discussing define activities. We have a quick learning assessment here. So describe the purpose of this process in your own words. We're trying to identify all of the discrete activities needed to complete the project's work. What do we start with when creating the activity list? We start with the work package items from the work breakdown structure. In what ways is the activity list different from the work breakdown structure? So the activities list is more so concerned with the actions that must be taken as opposed to the end result or the output of those actions. Give an example of rolling wave planning. So if we're discussing a construction project, maybe we will plan the initial stages in great detail while not really concerning ourselves with the interior of the building or how we are going to decorate the bathrooms, perhaps. What types of information would we capture in the activity attributes? It can include detailed descriptions of the activities, the dependency relationships, and as so far as predecessors or successors, leads and lags, resource requirements, any constraints or assumptions. What are some potential milestones we might document? It could include the completion of planning, a point in time that is considered a contractual obligation, such as a 60% completion meeting. 